Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. x cubed plus x plus 3 root 2 is equal to 0 and we're supposed to solve for x. At this point, if you want, pause the video and try this problem yourself. Okay, now, we do have this cubic and obviously, one can use the cubic formula, right? Even though it's not recommended. So we're going to be looking for a special pattern here. First of all, notice that we have the 3 square root of 2, and we have the x cubed plus x. So we're missing the x squared term, which is nice, because this gives us a reduced cubic, which is easier to solve than a full cubic. So what am I going to do? I'm going to manipulate this equation in such a way that I can get both the x and the x cubed. And what do I mean by that? If you consider a square root of 2 here, so and cube it, what are you going to get? The, what is square root of 2 cubed? It is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, correct? And this is 2 by definition, so it's going to equal 2 times the square root of 2. Awesome. Now, how does that observation help me solve this problem? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and break it down like this. I'm going to break it down into x cubed plus 2 times the square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2 equals 0. So what I did was basically took this term, the constant, and broke it apart. Now, the good thing about that is that 2 root 2 here, actually, can be written as square root of 2 to the third power. So that should give us something nice. Let's see what happens here. Now, I could probably say, do you see what I see? Okay. If you do see what I see, then you should be seeing a sum of two cubes here, which is x cubed plus square root of two cubed. This was the manipulation I was talking about. But again, I'm going to show you two methods. So this is the first one. What am I going to do next? Well, since this is a sum of two cubes, I can factor it. Let's write it as x plus root two multiply by, you know, the formula goes like a plus b multiply by a squared minus a b plus b squared. So it's going to be a squared minus ab plus b squared, which is 2, plus I can just put a 1 in front of it so that I can make it factorable, right? Because we're basically factoring this by grouping. So it's going to look like this. All right, that's equal to 0. Now, x plus root 2 is a common factor, obviously. So let's take that out. And now once we take that out, we're going to be getting x squared minus square root of 2 times x plus 2 plus 1. That's going to give me a 3. Awesome. So now I do have it factored. My equation has been factored. And I know it's kind of hard to believe, right, that this thing is going to turn into that. But that's, that's what it is. If you don't believe that, you can go ahead and distribute and you should be getting the original equation. So what am I going to do next? The next step is easy, actually. What I need to do is use the zero product property. So if this equals zero, then I should be getting x equals negative square root of two, which is one of the solutions, obviously, right? Okay. The other solution is going to come from here. So let's go ahead and set that quadratic equal to zero. And as always, almost always, right? I'm going to be using the quadratic formula. So x gives me negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is two, right? minus 4 times a times c, and c is positive 3, and divided by 2a, a is 1. Awesome. Well, awesome and not awesome, because what we have under the radical is a negative quantity. So that means we're not going to get real solutions. Too bad. But that's okay. We can still do with complex solutions. So let's go ahead and write them down. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. So what this is going to turn into is the square root of 10i with the plus minus in front of it, divide by 2. So those are going to be the other solutions. Since this is a cubic equation, obviously, you expect to get three solutions, that whether they're all real or not real. And in this case, we have two complex solutions that are conjugates. Okay, so this is the first method. Let's go ahead and look at it, this equation from another perspective, which is fairly similar to this one, obviously. Okay, so let's see what happens. Here's the second method. The second method involves, again, the knowledge that our equation will probably contain some
factor of square root of 2, right? Because the constant term is 3 root 2, so I'm thinking it probably has some root 2 in there. But what is it going to look like? Let me rewrite the equation. So this is my original, x cubed plus x plus 3 root 2. So this is what I'm thinking. Either I either have something like this, like uh, I have something like k times the square root of 2, or I have something like k times the square root of 2 plus n. So something like this form, okay? Uh, how am I going to find out? Well, I just have to plug these in. I'm going to start with the first one because I know the first one is going to work, right? But if it didn't, I could try the second one. If I just started with the second one, it would work as well. And we would just find out that uh, n will be 0. So let's go ahead and do that. Since this is a more general approach, I'm going to go ahead and substitute that number for x. Now, what is critical about this is that since square root of 2 is irrational, I want k and n to be rational numbers, okay? Whether they be fractions or integers, I don't care, but I want them to be rational. Okay, that's important information. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I'll get uh, k root 2 plus n cubed plus k root 2 plus n, right? Plus 3 root 2 equal to 0. Awesome. Let's go ahead and expand this a cubed. Now, you can expand this in many different ways, but I'll probably use the uh, expression as a cubed, which is going to be k cubed to root 2, so I can write it like that, plus b cubed. That's one of my favorite ex uh, expressions that I use. So here's the one that I'm using, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. All right, so this is what I use for a plus b cubed, and this is very helpful sometimes. Anyways, so this is, um, and then I have to write the rest, of course. Then I should be getting 3ab, 3nk root 2. See how easy that is? And then a plus b is, you already know, k root 2 plus n. Okay, it's kind of nicer for some reason. k2, k root 2 plus n plus 3 root 2. All this equal to 0. Let's simplify that. Okay. So let's see what I'm going to get from here. So let's arrange this a little bit. Uh, I have 2k cubed root 2 plus n cubed. Let's distribute here. k root 2 times k root 2 is going to give us k, uh, 2k squared. Multiply by 3n, you should be getting 6, right? n k squared. When you distribute the 3nk root 2 over here, you should be getting 3n squared k root 2 plus k root 2 plus n plus 3 root 2. Again, this whole thing should equal 0 at the end. Now, we can go ahead and put the constants uh, together. Not constants, but I should probably say the rationals together. So I should be getting this one, this one, and this one as our rationals. So we should be getting something like n cubed plus 6nk squared plus n. And then the other terms I can kind of put together. Plus, I have 2k cubed right? Okay, 2k cubed from here, plus 3n squared k, plus k plus 3. Okay, and that's multiplied by root 2, and all this equal to 0. Okay, now, something interesting is going to come out of this, hopefully, right? So, what this means is that I can just set these equal to 0, right? So, what I can do is I could probably do the following. So this should equal 0 and this should equal 0. Okay. And let's see what this gives us. Obviously, I can pull out the n and write this as n squared plus 6k squared plus 1 is equal to 0, right? That's one equation that I have. Now, I got to look at my original expression. So n is my rational here. k is the coefficient of root 2. Awesome. And I'm trying to find uh, solve for k and n. But here's one fact. These are rational numbers, and obviously they are real. So if n is 0, we're good because that's fine. But if n does not equal 0, here's the problem. If n does not equal 0, then we have to have that n squared plus 6k squared plus 1 is equal to 0. But these are squares, and this expression is actually greater than 1, right? So we do have this type of thing like, but 0 cannot be greater than 1. 
So this can't be zero in other words, right? There is no solution if n does not equal zero, which obligates that n should equal zero. Beautiful. If n is equal to zero, things are nicer because now I can go to my second equation and substitute n equals zero. Then I should be getting something like 2k cubed plus k plus 3 is equal to zero. Now you might be saying like we got another cubic. That's okay. We're going to be able to solve it. Okay. How? Notice that the sum of the coefficients of our terms is equal to the sum of the even terms, which means that k equals negative 1 is a solution. I think this came up in another video before. I remember talking about this thing. So we should be able to just go ahead and, you know, uh, factor it knowing that k equals negative 1 is a solution. So what I can do is I can actually write this as 2k cubed plus 2 plus k plus 1 is equal to 0 because I know that k equals negative 1 is a solution. But you got to remember something. This is q times k cubed plus 1, right? And then k cubed plus 1 is a difference of 2 cubes, so it's factorable. If I factor it, it's going to look like this, k squared minus k plus 1 plus 1 times k plus 1 is equal to 0. And if I pull out the k plus 1, the other factor is going to come from here, 2k squared minus 2k plus 2 plus 1, which is plus 3. So this is going to be my other equation. And if you look at the discriminant here, the delta is going to be b squared minus 4ac, which is 4 minus 4 times 2 times 3. Again, this is a negative quantity, which means that I don't get real solutions. If they're not real, they're not rational, but k needs to be rational, which means that I'm not going to accept the solution, but I'm going to accept the other solution, which means k is equal to negative 1, and we initially found that n equals 0. And our x was assumed to be k plus n root 2, right? That was our assumption, wasn't it? k root 2 plus n. Okay, k root 2 plus n. So let me go ahead and fix that. k root 2 plus n. Since n is 0 and k is negative 1, our solution needs to be negative 2. This is one of the solutions that we just found at the beginning, remember, by manipulating the constant term, since you know one of the solutions. Now, here's the question. How do you find the other solutions if you know that x equals negative root 2 is a solution? How do you find the other one? Well, let's go ahead and consider our original equation, right? So one method could be, I can kind of look at the uh, product and the sum of the roots, right? So that's one way to do it. So if I go by Vieta, I know that x1 times x2 times x3 is equal to, you know that in a cubic equation, that's going to be a negative, uh, negative b over a, c over a, and a negative d over a, right? So it's going to be negative 3 root 2, because a is 1, right? And I know that one of the roots is negative root 2, so that means the product of the other two roots must be a 3. Cool. So I got x2 times x3 to be 3, if I can find their sum by using Vieta, that would also be cool. So x1 plus x2 plus x3, as you know, is negative b over a, but b is 0, so this should be 0. And I know that one of the roots is negative root 2, so the other two solutions must add up to square root of 2. So I know that x2 plus x, x2 plus x3 is equal to root 2. So basically, the rest is writing the quadratic equation whose sum and product of roots are given, and then just go ahead and solve it from there. And how do you write that? It's going to be t squared minus root 2t plus 3 is equal to 0. And as you know, if you go back here, you're actually going to notice that when we solve this problem with the first method, that's actually the exact same equation that we came up with. Here, look at that. x squared minus root 2x plus 3. And then all of a sudden, you have the same thing right here. So you're going to be getting the exact same solutions. Uh, as your solutions here. So x2, 3 is going to be then root 2 plus minus root 10i divided by 2. So these are going to be all the solutions that I get. This is going to be x1, and these are going to be x2 and x3. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be safe, take care, bye-bye.